I'm Bernie Borges, and I'm located here in not so sunny Tampa Bay, Florida, specifically Palm Harbor. Uh, this is Poolside Sales Chat, hashtag Poolside Sales Chat. I am the executive producer of the Social Business Engine, which is an online hub where we provide content and education and, and hopefully inspiration for sales, marketing, and HR professionals on how to harness social for better business outcomes. And so recently, I was inspired by David Fisher on the topic that I want to cover today. And what we did was I recorded a podcast with David Fisher, Jack Kosakowski, and Jill Rowley, and then we turned that into a blog post as well. And there was something that David said that really uh, got me thinking, and that's what inspired the, the theme of, of today's uh, Periscope. Okay, So, um, so here, here we go. Um, oh, from Scotland. Wow, Aaron, you are in Scotland. So I can't imagine how many hours ahead you are, um, but it's certainly not mid-afternoon for you, but thanks for joining. So, um, so here's what, let me move this up just a little bit like that. Cool. Um, so, okay, everyone is talking about, hey, big sale. Um, everyone's talking about social selling. It's a hot topic. It's probably one of the top three hottest topics in 2016. Everybody's talking about it. Um, businesses are talking about it, sales professionals are talking about it, sales professionals are saying they want to be social sellers, and there are some people that are also saying that everybody in the company should be a social seller, that everybody in the company should be involved in social selling. Weather's looking amazing, actually it's raining behind me, although it's not pouring, but it's just um, that, you know sprinkling a little bit, so it's not exactly a sunny afternoon. So there's people in a company that believe that everybody should be involved in social selling. However, there's a lot of people that work in a company that have nothing to do with sales. They're not involved in sales in any way, shape, or form. In fact, they don't even really have a high perception of sales. So I want to give you kind of an example, one example that I was thinking about when I was thinking about this topic. Let's take, for example, an engineer who works for you know, a technology company. Let's say it's a mid-sized or even a large company. So this is an engineer who got an engineering degree. She's highly educated. She's highly skilled in a specific engineering discipline. And let's say that she's invited to participate on a panel session at a conference, an industry conference that's prestigious. The invitation to speak at this conference or to be on a panel is kind of a prestigious thing, right? Well, wouldn't it be cool if she then talked about that, told her network about it. But you know, she's not really engaged in using social media in the context of her work. You know, she's probably on social media, she's probably on Facebook for personal and fun, but she's not really kind of in the groove of using social media in, in work, right? So here's an engineer, highly educated, highly skilled, got this invitation to be on a panel at a conference, and are we gonna let this go this opportunity, you know, go unused? No. See, this is where potentially other people involved in the company can be involved in social selling. So, say for example that you asked her to publish on LinkedIn the fact that she's going to be on this panel, right? Hey, Salem 6960, I'm doing great. Uh, how are you? Um, hey, so she's invited to be on this panel and you ask her to tell your net her network about it. On, on LinkedIn or, or, or Twitter. But here's the thing. She's an engineer, and I'm not, I don't mean to stereotype all engineers, okay? I'm just in use, using this as one example. And she's not really proficient at using social media in the context of her job. And by the way, that's more common than it is uncommon, okay? So really um, quick point on that. So if you ask her to share it with her network, she may not be inclined to do so. And do you know why she may not be inclined to do so? Because she doesn't know how. And she's a highly intelligent person. Do you, so do you think she's going to say, uh, I don't know how to do that? Probably not. In fact, really unlikely that she's going to say that. So how do you deal with that? How does a business deal with this opportunity of this highly skilled engineer who is a talent in the company and she's been invited to be on a panel session at an industry conference. It's a great opportunity for the marketing team and the sales team to kind of show off this talent within the company on a specific area of the company. 
and this engineer doesn't know how to share it with her network. So the answer is coaching. Her company should get with her privately and should say, hey, let us show you how to do this. Because remember, she's highly unlikely to say, I don't know how to do this. So if the, if the company gets with her privately and says, let us show you how you do this, I mean, look, it's not rocket science, right? So once she understands the simplicity of it, the nuances of posting a status update on LinkedIn, tweeting it out, that sort of thing, including a link to the conference and including a picture and all that and the hashtag of the conference and all that, right? Once she understands those little nuances, then she's more inclined to do it, right? Additionally, the sales team and the marketing team can be also amplifying her own LinkedIn share, her own tweets by retweeting, et cetera, right? And even if she, if the, in this case, if, even if the engineer is not inclined to share this opportunity at all, right, at all, then at a minimum, the sales or the marketing team should interview her, ask her, you know, what the topic's about, what is she planning to cover, and maybe even create some content before this panel session by interviewing her and then taking that, that content in the form of a blog post maybe and then putting that out, publishing that before she goes to this panel session, include a picture of her, she's going to be on this panel session, these are the kinds of things she's going to be talking about, that sort of thing. So even though in this example, this engineer doesn't willingly participate, the marketing and the sales team can still capitalize on the opportunity by creating some content around this opportunity and then sharing that content out and getting some, some brand value, some sales value. So uh, let me leave you with this thought because I like to keep these poolside sales chats uh, nice and brief, just cover a quick point and then uh, move on. So let me leave you with this point. Over 70% of B2B buyers look for information in social media channels when they're doing research and evaluation for products and services they're, that they're considering. Over 70%. Now, if you were not familiar with that statistic, then I hope I just blew your mind because that is a real statistic. And if you want to know where that stat comes from, go to our website, socialbusinessengine.com. Go to the journals section and look at volume three where we participated or we published rather a research report that was sponsored by Dell. And Dell did this research with Carnegie Mellon University. And one of the data points that's in that report which you should download that report for more on this topic. One of the data points in that report is that over 70% of B2B buyers are searching for information on social media, not Google. I'm not saying they don't use Google. They use Google. But they're searching for information on social media when they're looking for products and services in, in the context of their evaluation. So that alone should be great motivation for others in the company to participate in social selling. Now, I know I said I'd wrap and, and I'm getting closer. So I guess I'll close with this, this one point. Should everybody in the company be involved in social selling? Literally speaking, I don't think so. There's too many people that it's just not a fit for. And especially when you've got, you know, thousands and thousands of employees, you can't realistically expect every employee to be involved in social selling. However, when you consider that statistic that over 70% of B2B buyers are looking for inf information on the products and services that they're considering and they're looking for it on social media, it certainly should be some motivation to get more people involved outside of sales and outside of marketing in the social selling process. So for more on this topic, we cover this in, in, in a lot of detail. Go to our website at socialbusinessengine.com. I publish a weekly podcast on social business topics where I interview people from amazing brands all around the world talking about this topic and other topics that will hopefully give you some actionable takeaways. Once again, this is Bernie Borges with episode two of Poolside Sales Chat. I will see you next time and I hope it's a little sunnier next time. See ya.